So Hacker and I are here at a travel TA whatever truck stop in just outside of Kingman, probably about 45 minutes to Hoover Dam and uh, Lake Mead. So we're gonna sleep for a few hours and then get up and keep going. Hopefully hit Vegas uh, this morning. See you in a bit. All right, this morning had a few hours of sleep. Gonna get a cup of coffee over here at the TA Express. Head for Lake Mead and then uh, Red Rock Canyon outside Vegas. As well as a few other spots. Show you what we get along the way. Very pleasant little bit. Nice breeze up, about 70. Warm than it doesn't gallop. Very nice. Feels good to be on the road again. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done.
here at uh, Red Rock uh, National Recreation Conservation Area, something like that. It's Bureau of Land Management. Get to get some drone shots here. Should be pretty cool. Spooky. So I believe this is what they call uh, Icebox Canyon. The cliffs uh, shield the canyon there from a lot of the sun, so it's colder than usual. Absolutely stunning and beautiful Red Rock Recreation Area, Conservation Area. Here at uh, Tool Springs uh, Fossil Beds National Monument. It's a fairly new national monument. I think it was in 2014, so there is no like visitor center like facilities. But the uh, the spot at Lake Mead had a stamp for it and a token, I think. So I got those, and now I'm here. We're gonna take a short walk with hiker after a bit. Just gonna eat a salad and then uh, take a little walk.
It's me and Hiker here at Tool uh, National Monument, Tool Fossil Springs. It's Tool, uh, something like that. Tool Springs Fossil Beds National Monument. So we're just gonna run over and check this out. Pretty cool, nobody else out here. It's about 90. Nice breeze up though. And yeah, just gonna take a little walk here. site. I guess they don't quite have the act together yet. And I don't know if there's like, you know, actual like places to see here, specific sites. There was some sort of a dig site, but I think it's probably mostly like this. Um, there were some folks coming out here before me that were picking up trash on their way out. And uh, yeah, looks like this has been just kind of a dumping ground for a while, which is too bad. But yeah, uh, not, it's, uh, well, somewhat underwhelming of a site for national parks. Interesting. If you're in the area, worth dropping by. But I don't know that I'd make a special trip for this. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of taking a walk in Las Vegas, or outside of Las Vegas. Okay, gonna get back to the car and head to Valley of Fire State Park. It's a bit of a bumpy road, sorry. Um, but I was just gonna say, this day has been really fun. It's been kind of a free form, just travel wherever we feel like traveling, we being me and the dog. Uh, I don't know that I've ever gotten to really travel with the Airstream like this before. Uh, the trip to Tahoe, it was still staying in an RV campground. Um, even coming from California to Gallup, staying overnight in uh, Flagstaff RV campground, it was planned out, it wasn't really you know, stop wherever we want to stop. But that means that I'm really enjoying, like, having a bed behind me, having a fridge behind me full of, you know, drinks if I want something, food if I want something. Uh, I had to charge the uh, DJI drone and had all the stuff to charge it. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying being able to take the Airstream place that I think uh, VLMing in uh, Alabama Hills is going to be pretty fun. Uh, on the way to Valley of Fire, hits the super bumpy road here, and uh, we'll see you there. This is Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada. About a 45 minute drive outside Vegas. I think Lake Mead is that way. Really pretty. Just 
some more footage of the beautiful Valley of Fire State Park in Nevada, which is apparently the first state park in Nevada. Well, hi. We are here in the Alabama Hills in California. Probably about a couple miles in to the, uh, what is it, movie road, movie lane, something like that. Got here around 1230 last night, I think. Took a little bit to find a spot. There were some folks out here. Expect it's probably about, I don't know, 90 during the day. It's about 60 right now. It's very nice. So we got here, got set up. Took a little bit to get a kind of level position on this. You can see where it's kind of slanted this whole area. I'm pretty happy with it. Just got to dehitch. It's about 8 a.m. Just got to make it in, 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 into town by uh, noon to check with the backcountry office about a Whitney permit. You can actually see Whitney portal down there. I was kind of hoping to find the same uh, spot that I parked with the R-Pod the last time I was here. Um, I don't know if this is, I don't think it is. It's not quite the right position, but it's very similar. I'm trying to remember if it was further along the road, maybe. So you can see the road kind of goes here and then way out there. So maybe down there, maybe I passed it, I don't know. But still, it's a pretty spot. Not, not unhappy with it. So hopefully it'll stay fairly cool. Um, you know, just, I've got the awnings out, so uh, hopefully that'll shield the windows and see what we can do here. It's very nice right now. Plan to take a hike to this little uh, hilltop. There's some other spots. Very pretty. Unfortunately, it's pretty smoky. You can definitely smell it in the air. Uh, getting here, it was like driving through fog for the most part. But, uh, honestly, it looks like it's kind of clearing up a little bit. And I'm hoping if I get a permit that it won't be, uh, you know, completely disappointing to go up with a smoky area. It's not too bad. Of course, you can't have fires out here, which makes complete sense. Um, but, you know, it would be kind of cool otherwise. I gotta find out if I can uh, get the grill out. They may be okay with propane. But yeah, just gonna have a nice morning. Do hitch, get the final setup complete, and uh, then head it down by noon. Let's see if they got a permit for Whitney. Uh, at the earliest, I can hike tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, if not, I've got till... Uh, I want to be on the road to Fort Bragg by 
Saturday morning. So I'll just keep rechecking each day. And otherwise, I'm gonna try to work on uh, video stuff and get some edits going. The signal's not great here. Occasionally I'll have a bar of LTE. You probably, this is probably the problem. It's probably between us and, and Lone Pine. So going up over the hill, I could get a signal out probably. And I'll, I'll break out the signal booster and see if that helps, but uh, otherwise it'll be fine. I can get editing done offline and uh, see what I can do. Very pretty morning. This is absolutely not real. Look at that. A lot of these little off-roads that have some of the really good sites are day-use areas. So. out there and go to the top of that. So I'll probably hike to the top of here. Maybe up there. We'll see. Right now we're just going to walk out in these tumbly rocks for a minute. See what's going on. This is down among the rocks. Me and Hiker are just hanging out down here. Cave or something there. Sorry if it's a little dark. I am here. It's about 6 a.m. I'm up at Whitney Portal Trail Parking. Trailhead Parking. Something like that. I was able to get a permit uh, yesterday at the interagency office. Turns out from May to October, it's in a quota period. So the lottery's, the lottery's done. Lottery doesn't matter. You can just show up and you can ask for a permit and check availability. So that's what I did. I'm here. Looking forward to getting it started. It's not, there's no snow up here and temps are kind of in the 40s during the day. So the whole getting here early to get started before the snow gets soft is not a thing. So I think I'm okay starting at six. Hopefully that is the case. Yeah, still dark. So missing some of the views, but well, sunrise is gonna happen here in a second. So that should be pretty cool. So see you up there, should be a good hike. I'm at about a mile in, beautiful sunrise happening here. It's definitely still kind of smoky out here, especially in the evenings, you see it. Uh, coming through Death Valley over those mountains, uh, super smoky, like high beams were like turning them on in fog, pretty much worthless. But this is absolutely unreal beautiful. It smells great out here. Um, I was here back in 2018 when I did that National Parks road trip and I uh, got to about 12,000 feet, but then there was snow up here. And if you didn't start early enough, the snow became soft by the time you got to a certain point. So the get folks I was hiking with, uh, we were all, you know, falling up to our waist in snow and couldn't get any further. There is no snow now, so it should be, should be perfect. More amazing views from the Whitney Ascent. <clears throat> I think if you can see it, the road is way out there, movie road in the Alabamas. 
then uh, right before that little that little outcropping the little hill there I think that's where I'm where I'm uh, camped at so just past a few guys on the trail looks like they're backpacking probably mean to camp at uh, Moraine Lake but uh, super pretty morning we're about uh, 2.5 in it's a I think 10 mile to the top and then 10 back down I'm not counting the down so much Feeling good so far. I think we're almost above tree line. Another mile or so probably. So I believe the first of the lakes is up over this little lip here. A pond up there. There were a couple, I forget how many in total, but uh, and then you get to, I think it was Moraine Lake at the uh, base of the final ascent up to the needles. So uh, let's see how we go. I love places like this where you can watch the sun kind of climb down the, as the sun rises, kind of climb down the cliffs. One of the most amazing places to watch that is Zion in Utah. As the sun kind of fills the valley. I wish I could record how this smells for you. It is absolutely amazing. Just past the first of little waterfalls. Well, Lone Pine Creek was down there and had a little waterfall, but uh, past a little one down here. So we've got a little bridge here up over this. Or a pond, I guess, but the guy at the interagency office said they're entering shoulder season, so I guess this is a less busy uh, time of the year. But you can already start to see, I mean, stuff's changing. For fall colors and uh yeah it's just super pretty it smells like christmas up here and uh she said they don't get their first snows until november and uh but they last long i mean when i was here in 2018 i was here late in may into june i think and yeah still very very much snowy. Of course, it might take a while to melt. But then again, I mean, at 6,000 feet in Gallup, we were getting snow, I think, into March. And uh, it was, you know, cold into May. So I can see it. Got a little offshoot here over to Lone Pine Lake. Gonna check that out real quick. I think I see it right there. So I'm up over the cusp of that uh, <clears throat> that little shelf or ridge, and I think this lake probably sits right on that, right on that spot. This is California hiking at its finest. This reminds me a lot of Lake Tahoe. Oh, that's pretty. I don't remember this from last time. Maybe it was uh, iced over. This is gorgeous. Wow. Unreal. So this up here will be the second kind of little terrace. I think there's another lake up there. And uh, then we'll switch back to get up. And then I think we're pretty much above tree line from there.
can see the beautiful little Lone Pine Lake down there. Just came up these uh, switchbacks. Moving right along. Just past another group of hikers. You can see we're getting up into where the sun's reached the canyon here. I think we're coming up on another lake. I'll bring you back in a minute. It's more of just a meadow pond, but uh, it's kind of dried up right now. I remember this area was like pretty much full of water last time. It feeds that little meadow down there, but then they had uh, melting snows and stuff that made made the water flow a lot bigger. Right now it's just this waterfall right up there. Very pretty. Sorry about the planes here, this must be a flyover zone. But I uh, just came to the second lake here. How pretty is that? And the sun's starting to fill the valley. Wow. Look at that reflection. So, trail, and I think it's going to take us up behind there, and uh, yeah, I think once we get up to that point, I uh, should be able to see Whitney, and uh, trees drive away right around here, so. So the last of the trees, and that's where we're headed right there, over that hill. And here's where we came from. It's about uh, 10, 11,000 feet right now. 3,000 more. We are officially above tree line. Just past a family. Some younger kids, I guess they went all the way up. Should prove it's doable, right? But, uh, yeah, just had a snack. Still feeling pretty good. A lot of times with these altitude things, my main thing with um, altitude sickness, I usually get a headache, uh, just like, extreme fatigue. I don't get nausea, but I like lose my appetite completely. So I just have to kind of remind myself to eat enough calories to keep up a good pace. So, keep moving on. Breaking out some tunes here. And, uh, back as we go. Got a couple of marmots here. Trailside Meadow. 
what you're doing, bud. Hi. <laughs> They're known for, uh, if you leave bags anywhere, they will rip into bags and go for, the, look for food. What you doing, bud? You gonna scamper away? Yeah. <laughs> Free little creek. I think when I was here before most of this was snow and ice. A good bit more water coming down. So let's see here. All the way up there. Uh saw the pinnacles for a minute up on that ridge behind the hill. I think the final lake is up there. So I'm having to take more breaks, but that's okay. Some stuff to take pictures of. So that's the way I came. Switch backs. Continue up there. <sighs> right now, other than kind of feeling out of breath, and we're almost at 12,000 feet, so that's to be to be understood. Uh, but other than that, like, just my knees are super tired. It's a lot of steps. But, it's not the Grand Canyon. I don't know if we can see the BLM spot down there or not. Where the airstorms camped. It's down there somewhere. And then this little creek feeds from this beautiful lake. Blue that is. That's a that's a glacial lake right there. So pretty. A little bit of snow up there. That looks like it never melted. Crazy. That is the way we're going. I believe that stuff right there is what they call the pinnacles. And you hike up behind that. And uh, I don't know if we can use this. Or that. Find out. Check out this view. Not quite, but I'm almost to the highest place I've been before. We're at about 12,500 right now. I believe we're going up there. But the guy I passed said Whitney is somewhere over here where you can't see it coming up, so I don't know. Um, doing okay, had some food, had some uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen. But the watches run out of battery, so I guess I didn't uh, charge that for a little bit. So the last time I was here, uh, I think we went up that way because this whole thing was iced over. And uh, this whole thing with the, with the cables was iced, which was super sketch. So obviously if you slip, you're gonna bug it. So I had a short break, recharge the watch, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was kind of rested for a minute, got some sun. This uh, is close to the highest I've been up here before, but I think uh, one of the people I passed said that there's supposed to be 97 switchbacks. It's crazy. I don't really know because I never finished the switchbacks. I don't really know what comes after that. <clears throat> well, we shall see. How wild is this? Wow. That is 
something. I gotta look up. I don't remember what the uh, what the name of the mountains are on the other side. Came down through them last night. The windy road in the Death Valley area. All right, I'm gonna keep trucking. Okay, I'm at uh, a little over nine miles and 13,000 feet. Bumped into some guys, asked them, you know, what happens after the switchbacks. They said, that is windy. And after the switchbacks get to the top, there's like a, a, a ridge crest trailer, ridge trailer or something that goes over to there. So yeah, still doing pretty good. Mostly just my knees and uh, glutes that are having trouble. But no headache, no nausea. A little bit uh, fatigued, but not terrible. I'm hungry. It's about, it's a little after noon, and five and a half hours. So, I expect the hike down to be faster. But, even if it gets dark, I've got a headlamp and all that. Check that out. Reminds me of Grand Canyon. So I think the switchbacks are finished. I saw a sign over here, which is probably the turnoff for the last trail going up to Whitney. Each step gives uh, more amazing views. The guy said. I thought it was two miles from the sign. I'm at, uh, by the time I hit that sign, it's gonna be 10 miles. So if it's two more, it's gonna be 12, which is longer than I thought. But still, you kind of get to a point in this sort of thing where you put in all this effort to get up here. So even though it's like super tiring and uh, you'd probably kind of love to quit, uh, at the end of the day, you spent this much energy getting up here and you might as well put it to use and finish the job. So, plan to finish the job. Coming up on the sign. Oh my gosh. Wow. This is Sequoia National Park. See the smoke coming up over. So it looks like this is the final turn off here. Whitney Portal, if we 
seven. Crabtree Ranger Station. Extreme danger. Canyon and Sequoia. Of course, some of their big redwoods burned within the last few weeks, so a lot of smoke. Wow. So there's what the trail turns back into the What the, the trail that goes back for to a new portal. Let's see if we can get a better view of the switchbacks without causing a landslide. Trail continues. Not quite as bad as the switchbacks, but after you've done all the switchbacks, to do more uphill is it's a beast. So just came through a little bit of a notch here. Just keeps winding its way that way. Wow, that's wild. So we've got a little crossing here. I think this is gonna window back out on Whitney Portal. Oh, oh. Little, uh, butt clenching right there. Oh, wow. Yep, it's back down that way. Let's see if we can see the... Quite sure which way the PCT goes, but I think it winds through here back that way. Alright. <clears throat> so, for the last guy I ran into, you can barely see the shelter right up here. Gotta go all the way up here. It's hard to believe that's like a mile, but uh, yeah. And we're 
are hoping that does not turn into a storm. This little bird popped right up to me. Just walking along. It's funny. That is the way we've come so far. And the staff in charge of the phone. And the watch again. So phone's doing Strava for Distance so I can total up an accurate distance and charge the watch and then hopefully put it back on to finish. Switchbacks. Well, it ended up being about 12 miles. Long way back to somewhere in there. But there's a bunch of uh, geological markers out here. Years, maybe. But pretty cool. I'm telling you, this last two miles was uh, was a bit rough.
headed down from uh, Whitney now. It's 12 mile miles back. And, uh, yeah. Pretty tired. Legs are kind of jiggly. But, uh, did finally make it. So, we're back to the... Oh, and it's uh, 3.45, I think, leaving. So, 12 miles, it might be dark by the time I get back, but uh, like I say, I got a headlamp. And uh, looking forward to a steak, some good grilling, and a glass of wine, too. I'm back at the trail for uh, the Crest Trail branching off to John Muir. It's been kind of warm here because we've got the sun on this side, but I'm pretty sure as soon as I drop down over there, it's going to be pretty chilly, so the coat's probably going to go back. Should be the, just about one of the last uphills. And uh, thank goodness for that. Alright, gotta get moving. So, just on the way back home, the sun's kind of setting in the valley here. Luckily, it is all downhill now, and I am feeling better. My legs are just taking up a ton of energy. This switch backs. So there's supposed to be 97 switchbacks. I'm down quite a few of them. I ran out of water a mile or two ago. I uh, brought three liters, which I thought would be plenty, but I think things took longer than I thought. And, uh, gosh, that's pretty. And uh, the next water is down here. There's been no water up this way, nor did I expect any. Um, but it's not hot. I've got my puffy coat on again, and I'm not sweating a whole lot. It's pretty, pretty chill. So it's not like I'm losing a lot of water or getting hot. All right, I'm gonna keep switchbacking. So let me just tell you, this is pretty nice. Very pleasant. Got a few of the Alabamas. Mount Whitney that I hiked right up there. Got all my windows open. I just uh, redid all the treatments of the valves out there. I used the 306 protectant stuff. Having a good time. Got the screen door going. Hikers outside just sitting around. Very nice. It's been pretty breezy out here most of the time, so you get a good crosswind. I've been using the fan uh, for the first couple of days. Well, first two days, I guess. But I came home last night after hiking Whitney, and the whole rig was dead, which I... I didn't realize until earlier what the range for the battery voltage was. So it was like 11.3. So I looked it up on the way and that was like well past discharge. Apparently below 12 is like essentially discharged over less than 50%. I kind of knew it was going to be dead. Um, I didn't know what kind of hassle that would be. Dead, dead means the refrigerator even on propane doesn't work because it needs the ignition from the battery to light. Same thing for the water heater. Also means the water pump, which is under here, is uh, not working, which means you have no running water. So it's completely dark. I broke out like a little battery operated lantern thing and made dinner and whatnot. And like I said, I knew it was gonna be dead. All of the other stuff was dead, which was kind of a bummer. So the laptop had like completely died, which I don't really know why. Mobile hotspot had died. Bunch of other stuff. So it was kind of, and of course from the hike, like my watch was completely dead. The be The iPhone was, essentially dying so it was kind of like trying to charge that and recover from a completely dead trailer so i used the goal zero 1400 it had maybe 55 percent i think last night so i'd had the solar panels out so it had, it had charged during the night and it's usually what i use to run the whole electronic setup it's it's set up to tie into that but then it's also the backup for how i recharge the rig 
uh, house batteries. So I recharged the batteries a little bit at 55%. It was drawing like 350 to 400 watts to recharge the batteries, which is kind of high. So I only got an hour out of it. It got up to, I think 11 or uh, sorry, 12.3. Well, I stopped it at 3% left so I could charge the laptop and a few other things. And then this morning I hooked up the truck to the trailer hitch and ran it for a few hours, which is kind of ridiculous, but kind of like the poor man's generator to recharge the rig off your truck. So it got it up to 12.3, I think it's down to 12.2. I may need to recharge again this evening. So I may drain about 50% I got off of that and uh, recharge the house battery again. My understanding is 12.9 is full. Less than 12 is considered discharged. That's uh, less than 50%. And then uh, it drops off from there. So I've been trying not to run the fan. That's kind of a big power hog. Uh, so I've got the battery operated fan, which goes for quite a while on the uh, DeWalt Lion battery system. So it's doing a good job. I've got, thankfully there's a breeze up and I have kind of a crosswind here, which kind of does its own breeziness. It is 76 in the trailer, 81 outside. So it's, it's doable. This is a cooler time of year. And I kind of knew that heading into it, that this was going to be the situation. It gets down to about 55 at night. So it definitely cools off and it's, it's easily sleepable. We've had a stream of a few cars going by, but uh, not too bad. So I fixed my license plate since moving the bikes to the back here. It kind of covered the license plate. So I had the license plate in this window. It fell off the adhesives. I put it back here. It kind of sits in the notch here. Plus I have two uh, 3M Velcro adhesives up top. So hopefully, you know, somebody can see that from behind. Should be good. Uh, last little, oh, and I changed the, vacuumed and changed the filters in the vents, even though the AC is not running. That was kind of on my to-do list. I didn't get a chance before I left, uh, left Gallup. Last thing to do, I want to install a push button lock in here. Uh, it's kind of similar to this right here which is for these. That's where we keep the weights for working out. They will knock this open and slide all over the floor. So putting that little pushback lock stops it from going. And then this, no matter what I put in here, and I stopped putting heavy stuff on this top shelf, but it's still opened up and spilled all over the floor. So I want to install a push button lock right there and hopefully that'll help keep that closed. Okay, so I'm gonna install this push button lock right here. You can see already, this is a little bit inset. This is the kind of pressure lock that they've already got. Here's the receiving piece right there. And you can kind of see that there's a bit of an overlap, All right? So I have to inset it just a little bit right below here. So to do that, and I had one more of these, I, I guess I bought it like a two pack. This is the inside push button lock system. So what I wanna do is put it about there, right? That's about the same distance from the edge as the top piece right here. So that's gonna be where I'm gonna inset that. The little ring part that goes on the outside right here, right? Will be on the outside point about here. The width of the piece you need for drilling is uh, three-fourths. It may be a little bit under. It seems like I remember having to like ream it out a little bit with a regular drill bit, but that does the majority of the hole. And then I have to mount this on the inside, which catches on the lip of that. Okay, so I'm gonna get to installing and bring it back. All right, I've got a little outline drawn here. Um, this is the forward edge here, and I just kind of know that the circular part is equidistant from the forward edge, so that's just where I have to aim my drill bit. So we're going to see about that. Okay, 
Let's see if this fits, which it does not completely, so I need to bring that out a little bit. that installed we just have to install the catchment piece. put the little push button on here first piece is installed closes little push button lock here now, because the lock is equidistant, I just need to make some marks. Sometimes these can take a lot of adjustment. I think it's just the angle of how you make the drill hole. But, pretty happy with that. So lock, we are locked. Open, we are open. Pretty good. Happy with that. So that should keep this from opening up accidentally during transport. Pretty cool. Okay, just out here having a nice night in the Alabama hills. How you doing, Hike? You doing okay? Just loving having some outside time. Yeah, beautiful evening. Check that out. portal there in the distance. Whitney, I believe, is that peak. Where was yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Just a beautiful evening. I'm charging up the house batteries with the solar gain I got today. About 50% on the power bank. And after that, just gonna make a nice steak dinner. Fire up the grill. Yep. It's been pretty windy, but hopefully if the wind is, wind's pretty good right now, so hopefully it'll die down enough to heat up. Let's make some steak and asparagus. doing with the temp. It's a nice evening, huh? <sighs> it's come down from Whitney about 
about this time yesterday. That's a sight, huh? Sun's still setting on those hills. All right, we're up to about 300. That's probably fine to get stuff started. So let's get it going. All right, like I said, gonna use one of these as a bit of a trade to get everything loaded up. She's on here. All right, almost 400, pretty good. So that's six spares, it's gonna go straight on. Just like so. Mistakes. Wrap up the onion. Go with the steak. Like so. Beautiful. I'll give that about 10 minutes and then I'll flip the steaks. Alright, steaks should be done. A little friend waiting on me down here. Just to stay outside rather than out here. Mmm, looks good. plates because I thought I would be boondocking more and could just burn them, you know, in a fire. But... As I started to be, you know, at work and at more campgrounds longer, I decided I didn't want to be as wasteful and use paper plates, so I got these metal plates from MSR. I'll link those down below if you're interested. They do have the consequence though that they're hot on the bottom when you put hot stuff on them. So you have to have something to hold them with. Okay, so this leaves us with this cozy little setup. Steaks, onion, and asparagus. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the evening. Got a cozy little setup here, got the lights out. Awnings up. Wind's died down for the night. I'll probably pick up later in the night. But yeah, just gonna sit here and enjoy the time. Yeah, super cozy little setup. And now, time to enjoy dinner. Let's get a little Seinfeld going. Enjoying the end of the sunset here. Got the lights out. Very nice. I will probably uh, try to do some astrophotography tonight. Assuming we get some stars out, but it's pretty clear. Don't see a moon yet. Got one star there.
This is the last day. This is Friday, uh, October 1st, I think. This is our last day at Alabama Hills uh, Bureau of Land Management area. Kind of a smoky night. Did some drone footage last night, which is pretty cool. Did some night uh, astrophotography, which is pretty awesome. Turned out really well. Super happy with that. And that's just the start. But here is uh, the last night. It is about seven, uh, sorry, 5.45. And as you can see, a little bit smoky over there. Probably gonna shut down the solar panels here in just a few and uh, pack that up and get ready for tomorrow morning. Plan to set out by 6 a.m. Uh, headed to Fort Bragg. So that'll be the last, uh, the last road trip. It's going to be about 10 hours, so a little bit of a long drive. We're going up through uh, kind of the Yosemite Pass area, so hopefully that'll go okay. But yeah, just having a nice evening. Probably have a last steak here, and then uh, start getting things packed up for tomorrow morning. All right, we're getting stuff ready to go here this morning. Just going to recap what I've got left. We're at 12.1. I did charge it yesterday afternoon. The power bank's on 10%, I think. 50% fresh, black is 15, gray is 50%, which makes sense. Not too bad. So we've had a great time here at Alabama Hills and uh, just packed up, getting ready to leave. Took about a half hour, pretty simple. Never put down the stabilizers or, you know, no hookups or anything. So, and I packed up some stuff last night, so it went pretty fast. But uh, this is a little bit of a sunrise here. It was a pretty smoky night last night. The mountains were pretty obscured. But this is uh, just looking out the car window here on the way out. Gonna head up uh, toward uh, Mammoth Lakes. Uh, hopefully hit uh, Devil's Post Pile National Monument and uh, see what's going on there. And then uh, head up over to Fort Bragg. Gonna be about a 10 hour day. Um, hopefully get there before nightfall and uh, you know set up before it gets dark it's always easier that way so uh leaving around six here and uh hopefully have a good trip see you along the way Here at the Devil's Post Pile National Monument. They're actually okay with dogs, so hikers with me. And short uh, 0.4 mile hike to Devil's Post Pile. And then back, we just uh, came down a very uh, nail bitey kind of road. Show a uh, time lapse of that.
Isn't this wild? It's like a bunch of tumble down pillars. Reminds me of uh, Giant's Causeway in uh, Ireland. Maybe it's the same kind of volcanic activity. So we're on the trail leading to the top of the post pile. Look at this, it's just like a wall with pillars sticking out. Crazy. We are on top of the post pile. How cool is this? It's like cobblestones. This is the beautiful Mono Lake. I'm guessing it's pretty low. I don't know if that's like deposits on the shore or what that is, but really pretty. Just past Lee Vining and uh, on the way to, well, we're on the way to Fort Bragg. I don't know where we're off to next. Pretty, huh? here in uh, just across the Nevada California border was in Nevada for just a little bit super pretty farmland up here about to get ready to cross over Luther Pass into Tahoe be South Lake Tahoe do a short loop not all the way dropping down to the lake but a short loop around South Lake really pretty
Okay, so uh, nine hours later, it's been kind of a long day. Uh, me and Hiker stopped at uh, Devil's Post Pile National Monument outside uh, Mammoth Lakes. Uh, just pulled onto Highway 20 in Fort Bragg, past the little uh, overlooked spot, so we're done with that and decided to pull over. And crack the last monster on the way in. Got about 32 miles left. This road is uh, kind of busy, more busy than I remember it. People coming and going. It's uh, 1950. So that makes it kind of more annoying than usual. Uh, it's a very windy, uh, curvy road. And people like to drive it fast, and it's not fast pulling an airstream, so I have to keep pulling over. So, not really looking forward to uh, setting up camp in the dark. That's always fun. But, we'll see what, how bad it is. Uh, gonna kind of park it and scout the, the spot she assigned me when I get there. So, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, just a little bit left. It's been, uh, been a little over a year since I was here last. I'm back. This will be the first place I've come back to as a travel nurse contract. So, looking forward to, you know, seeing the folks I remember from here and uh, getting settled back in. But yeah, probably gonna stop by the store and get something to eat after we get camp set up. See you in a bit. And we're back to where we started. Leisure time, RV park in Fort Bragg. where we, and I say we, I mean Hiker and I, this is where we came up with the two mile daily walk. This little split off point was about two miles from the campground. So just kind of turned it into a tradition of two miles a day. I'm looking forward to getting back to uh, running out here. It should be pretty good more of a trail run instead of a road run. But we're back to where it started a year ago. We got settled in uh, around nine o'clock last night at Leisure Time RV Park. And uh, today we've had our inaugural walks both in the forest behind the RV park and here at Como Bluffs, where we started. Very nice afternoon. Dramatically more humid here, uh, but that's to be expected. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. 
setup was uh, pretty easy at the park last night. I did have an issue with the other guys next to me, my neighbor. His power cable was a little bit frayed, so like every time I moved it, it shut off, which was kind of annoying, but he was cool about it and came out and taped it up and everything. So, we're just gonna finish up here and then go home and have some dinner. It's been a good day. It's good to be back. <laughs>